last week in Mark chapter 15, we saw how Jesus was handed over to the Roman authorities, how he was scourged, he was mocked, he was crucified, and he suffered a horrible death. And Jesus suffered all of that to pay for our sins, not his own. And we last left the Gospel of Mark at the end there in chapter 15 where Jesus' body was taken by Joseph of Arimathea and laid in a tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph observed where the body of Jesus was laid. And then in Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 1, that when the Sabbath day was passed... Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint the body of Jesus. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And when they said among them, or they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? You know, Jesus was laid in a new tomb, a tomb with a great big stone rolled in front of it, the doorway. It was sealed. I mean, this was no easy thing for anyone to move. And these ladies are thinking, well, who is going to help us move this thing? I mean, this is going to be heavy. But when they got there and they looked up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Yeah, I would be too. I mean, the tomb is supposed to be sealed. They come and the, the stone's rolled away, rolled back. It's open. They go in, instead of finding Jesus' body, they find a young man clothed in a white robe sitting there. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. He tells them, I know you're here to see Jesus' body, but Jesus isn't here. He is risen. And look, he says, look, his body's not in here. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him as he said to you. Just as Jesus had told them, he would meet them, he would go before them to Galilee. And so, of course, verse 8, they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid as well. Now when Jesus rose um, early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons, we are told. Mary Magdalene, who had been with Jesus and the disciples for a long time, was one Jesus cast demons out of. He appeared first to her. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. Imagine that. You know, Jesus died, say, on a Friday. And after his death and put in the tomb, I mean, the, the disciples of Jesus mourned all, all night, all on the Sabbath, all that morning of Sunday. But she went and told those who had been with him, he is risen. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Not just Thomas. All of them. They didn't believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. And after that, Jesus appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. They had a hard time, and understandably so, but they had a hard time 
believing that Jesus was risen from the dead. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Told that Jesus told them, he rebukes them first for their unbelief, but then he says, I want you to go tell the world, everybody. Of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, who is now risen from the dead. And that, that if they believe and are baptized, they will be saved. But if they do not believe in Jesus, that he died and rose from the dead, then they're going to be lost. And there will be signs and miracles that would come in their day and their time to show the truth of that word. And then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven. And sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. They went out just as Jesus told them to do. Jesus helped them just as he told them he would. They were performing signs through the spirit of God. Confirming the word, the gospel that Jesus Christ died on that cross. Jesus Christ lived on this earth in human flesh. He suffered and he died a horrible death on that cross to pay for our sins. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. Jesus defeated death. He defeated Satan and sin. And there is victory. There is salvation. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And that is the message we preach. This is the good news. This is the gospel message. The gospel message of Mark that shows us Jesus on earth, the works he was doing, the teachings he was giving, his death, his resurrection. And now we're told today to believe, just as they did, as they were told to believe in Jesus, to repent of our sins and be baptized so that we can be saved question to us today is, do we believe? If we will believe and obey the gospel, we'll be saved. But if we choose not to believe, we're going to be lost. And Mark's account of the gospel again powerfully shows us our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. To know, to believe, to be saved by, and to hope in. Praise God for that. God bless.